Hey, greetings. Welcome to the BrainGage channel. I'm Mark Comerdahl, and uh, I'm going to present you with another case study today uh, about, uh, in this case, traumatic brain injury and pulse electromagnetic field. So let's get started. And what you see here is that TBI, or is an acronym, obviously, for traumatic brain injury, PEMF, is, stands for pulse electromagnetic field. And basically you're putting coils on someone's head and uh, you're presenting pulse electromagnetic field. It's a it's very, uh, very weak uh, stimulus, but it, it's very effective. And the point of this is to just sort of demonstrate that you know, the recovery that the patient showed uh, from a chronic condition and, and demonstrate that how the brain gauge is, is useful for, for that. So our case study comes from a paper published in the Journal of Science and Medicine, and it's called Use of a PMF to Treat Complex TBI with, and with Brain Gauge and River Mead Outcome Measures. Brain Gauge, you should be familiar with if you're on this channel. Uh, River Mead Outcome Measures, that's just another set of outcome measures. It's a symptom scorecard. Now, this paper has a lot of information about this case. And if you want to read all the details about it, that is great. Uh, and it's online. It's free. Uh, the company, Cortical Metrics, actually uh, hosts this, this journal. It's no secret. And we promote all kinds of things. So if you want to submit a paper about your cases, knock yourself out. We'll, we'll help you get it published um, if that's the kind of thing you're into. But... Anyway, all that data, all the initial data, I'm gonna to try to summarize as briefly as possible. Here's a summary of the beginning, is that uh, there was a female patient and born in 1958. Uh, and she basically showed up for care in March of 08 with uh, uh, post-concussive symptoms. And uh, she had, and her first injury was a motor vehicle accident in 2006. And then she had another one after that, after that first uh, case in the 2009. Now, she did not enroll in the study until 2016. So many of the symptoms that she had from those accidents in 2006, 2009 persisted until 2016. And if you want to read about the specific symptoms and what happened, you can go to the paper and read about it. I'm not going to do that right now because we try to keep videos short. Now, let's look at what happened. What was the overall thing going on in, in this test? Now, if you're not familiar with the brain gauge scores, um, hopefully you're getting more familiar. Uh, zero is a bad score. 100 is a good score. And so as you go, as scores improve, go higher, they're improving. And the bottom axis is the timeline. And this person was monitored from July until November of 2016. Now, this indicates when the treatment was. This horizontal dashed line indicates when the treatment was. And this first, uh, first data point was collected before the first treatment. And what you see is that with treatment, her performance improved overall. And, you know, she, you know, basically, and then treatment, Treatment was stopped, and this is basically, uh, you know, to see if this if the effects of the treatment were sustainable, and they were moderately. It looks to me like they were moderately uh, improving. If you want to look at specifics of the score, this first point right here, you can see all the scores that were collected, and you know so they weren't they weren't very good. But here, the scores, you know, the August 16 scores taken from at this this time point you see that everything got a lot better. So, and the other thing to just point out that this was part of a much larger study, not just an N of one. And these are the group results where, you know, pre-treatment, most of the scores were poor, post-treatment, uh, you know, or during pre-treatment or end of treatment, most of the scores were much, much better. They all, everyone overall, the overall average of this study was that, uh, people were very responsive to this treatment and got better. Now, we this is, again, the overall score. And just as a reminder, you have lots of different metrics, and these are generated from lots of different tests. And the overall score is a score 
that's you can think of it as an average. It's not exactly an average, but it is a it's a combination of all these scores. And you know, basically though, what about what can you learn from other measures? So let's take a look. Well, you know, let's take a look. There are two measures, and we just pull timing perception and TOJ out. Well, timing perception actually looked pretty good to start with. And it persisted all the way through. It sort of was, you know, it was good to start with, and treatment really didn't have an effect. Temporal order judgment, though, on the other hand, was really bad, about as bad as it could be, and I got as good as it could be. And then it seemed to be a little sensitive to stopping treatment as well. Uh, now, what's the difference? Well, the difference is timing perception is thought to be uh, localized or, or strongly influenced by the cerebellum at the back of the head. So this is a measure that if you damage the back of your head, uh, and this is anecdotally, we see this a lot in sports concussion where the back of the head, uh, you know, takes a blunt, uh, gets damaged. And uh, this score does much more poorly. Now, this TOJ seems to be much more sensitive to either temporal or and or frontal areas. And, you know, in this case, uh, this particular subject had uh, had undergone some other uh, imaging studies where, or actually quantitative EEG, where it showed that she had temporal lobe problems. So most likely that's a reflection of, of problems in the temporal lobe, but problems in the temporal lobe don't impact timing perception or they, you know, not as much anyway. So that's the kind of interesting thing is that you've got two different measures and, you know, they're obviously this is much, much bigger, <laughs> bigger change than you saw in the overall score, but it's uh, or much more pronounced. And this is obviously less pronounced, but if you go back to the overall score, you see, oh, it was a nice overall improvement. But, you know, don't forget to take a look at some of the other measures. It really depends on the case you're looking at. And that's the whole point for that exercise. Now, if you have any other questions or you have an interesting case study you want to talk about, and we'd like to, uh, we can either talk about it on video or personally, um, I'm always up for that. So send it, send it to me and uh, thanks for watching.